The best way to fulfill your life's mission is to chart your own course. When you leave behind organizations who expect you to serve their own mission and purpose, you create room for your own destiny. If you ask David Brandenhorst to quantify his mission and vision when it comes to business and leaving a legacy to be proud of, that's the definition he is most likely to honor. He's the owner of Perfectus Resources, which aims to assist entrepreneurs in taking their messages and gifts and transforming it into businesses which changed the world. Brandon Horst joined me this week to have a conversation about everything surrounding entrepreneurship and maximizing your business potential. I'm Kevin McShan. Let's have this conversation. Absolutely. So, David, if you're ready, I'll take a moment to welcome you to the program. And I'm excited to learn all about uh, your journey in business. So great to see you. And uh, thank you so very much for being here. Of course. I'm ready to go when you are. Absolutely. So, David, you say that success in business is caused by uh, careful planning, uh, consistent action, and uh, developing our own on strength and skill set. So I'm wondering if you can uh, go through that philosophy for me and why it sort of grounded or rooted you into the position you take with business. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, I really feel like, you know, if you're going to be successful in your life, that success for everyone is defined differently. So what would be success for you or for someone else would be different than it is for me. Like we don't have the same, we don't have the same objectives. So if you're going to have success with your life, one of the first things you need to do is define what does that mean? What does it mean to be successful? What does it mean to, to have success in your life? What does that look like? And for some people, you know, it's about, you know, getting involved in, in the health space, about helping people become healthier in their lives. And other people are like, how do I help people become better at managing their finances and managing that part of their life? There's all sorts of different ways that you can get involved in, in, in the world and different things that you can do. And one of them, so one of the first things you have to do is what, what does success look like for you? So once you define that and once you decide this is what success looks like for me, this is, this is what it means for me to know that at the end of my life, when I'm done with everything, that I've done what I believe I was supposed to do. I've, I'm living out my purpose here on earth. I'm doing the things that I'm supposed to be doing. Once you start getting your hands around some of that, then the next thing is, okay, now I know my direction. I know where I'm going. The next steps are really, can you take consistent action? Can you, can you take consistent action to start moving in the direction of, of that goal? Can you start doing those things? Can you start moving forward with all of that? And if you can do that, you know, it becomes, you start to achieve success. You start to realize that dream if you can be persistent, if you can continuously and regularly take action, you know, too many people, they get started on something, they get excited about their dream and they'll work on it for a couple months or so. And then they kind of fall off and they get busy and they don't have the capacity to stay with it and keep going. 
the people who can really be successful are those that can really stay persistent and keep taking action and keep chipping away at it on a daily basis. And then what's going to happen is if you do that, you're going to hit a point at somewhere down the road where you're going to start achieving a lot of those things that you set out at the beginning as your goals that I'm going to do. You're going to start actually achieving those things. And when you do that, what's going to happen is you're going to say, wow, I actually did a lot of these things that I set out to do. I'm actually now, I'm there. I'm actually checking boxes and saying, yeah, I, I did this and I did that. This is amazing. And then you're, it's like you climb to that top of that first mountain and you've got there and you realize, well, shoot, if I achieve this, well, maybe I can also achieve that. And you start setting your height, your sights on a next set of a accomplishments. You set, start setting your sights on the next things you want to achieve. But what you realize is that to get there, you really need to be able to raise your abilities again to the next level. You need to increase your capacity and your abilities and your skills to become even a little bit stronger and a little bit better than what you were before. So that your capacity for achieving things is even higher than what it was two years ago. And, and so it's a continuous process of then continuing to set those goals and those that vision for where you want to go and be and then just keep taking action. And then every time you get there, you raise it up again and keep going. Yeah, absolutely, David. You know, I always say that, that everyone's uh, depiction of success is different, isn't it? Yes, 100%. Absolutely. I agree. Absolutely. And you also said that it's important for uh, people in business to chart their own course. So I'm wondering if you can tell me about that. Yeah, one of the things that I really know is like everybody has something in their own heart that they feel like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And when you're working for another company, when you're working for someone else, your, your vision of what you may want to do may be somewhat aligned with it, but it's really hard for you to achieve that thing that's inside of you if you're always following someone else's plan, if you're always following someone else's vision and their business and the things that they're doing. If, they, if they're laying out their mission statement and what they're trying to accomplish through their organization or their business, it can be hard for you to achieve your vision within that. Now, sometimes it does happen. Sometimes it is possible to get there. But the best way for an individual to really feel like they're living out their purpose is they need to can take control of their life. They need to take control of their time. They need to take control of their circumstances, of the things that are going on in their life. And to be able to say, I'm going to chart my own course and I'm going to be the one who determines, you know, where I go on Monday morning. I'm going to be determining how much income I can make. I want to be determining the type of clients and people I want to be working with. And when you do that, you get to dictate. You get to set the terms as, under which you're going to be working. And as part of all that, you really can, you know, then pursue directly that vision that you, and the goals that you have for your own life. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I know uh, you're extremely passionate also about helping entrepreneurs sort of design, uh, launch and grow their own businesses so they can have uh, more consistent or uh, consistent cash flow and the ability to experience li life the way they want to uh, want to and, li and live out their dreams. So I'm wondering if you can tell me about that, buddy. Yeah, um, you know, I really feel like entrepreneurs are the key to the future. Um, I, I think, you know, you look at large corporations and organizations, if you want to get something done, you have so much bureaucracy that you have to fight through. You have to get approval by the finance department. You got to get human resources to okay. You got to get this boss to sign off on it. And to get any changes made, to get any things really done, it can become quite cumbersome and there's a real bureaucratic machine that you have to work through to be able to get things done and to get things moving and it can become very very difficult and i believe like our government it's not going to be the the vehicle to help us it's not i don't even think most of the time they have our best interests at heart they're not even trying to do what's best for we the people so who does that really leave? Who are the people that are really left? Well, that's really the entrepreneurs because the entrepreneurs are the ones that are very nimble. They're the ones that can see a problem in the world and say, you know what? I see that and I see people are struggling with that. 
I'm going to create something to help that. I'm going to create something to solve that problem. I'm going to do something. I'm going to create a product or a service that can deal with that issue. And, and I can just go out and do it. I don't need to get all sorts of approval or committees to sign off. And someone else could squash my idea because they don't like it and they don't get the vision of it. I'm just going to go run and do it. I'm just going to take it on and, and get it done. And that's why I really believe being an entrepreneur is so incredibly important because you can go out and do that. And that's what, you know, we do in our business is we really help people design a business that's really suited to what they want to do in their lives and then launch that business out into the world so that they can get their products and services out there and then grow it so that they can reach more people and earn the income that they desire. And that's really where we started to design, launch, grow from. Fantastic. And you know, uh, David, part of my background and my mission is all about inclusion, diversity, and equity for uh, folks with disabilities because I have my own lived experience being diagnosed with the cerebral palsy at birth. So anytime I get to talk to business professionals such as yourself, I'm always curious to ask them, how do you think we can achieve more diversification in business and provide more opportunities for folks with uh, disabilities to uh, succeed in business? Yeah, well, I really think, you know, and I think there's more things happening and changing and all the time. And I think it's really important where we can create opportunities for everyone. Um, and I have a, an example of one that I can use. I have a good friend of mine started a business called Game You. And Game You is a business that teaches kids and young people mostly how to create video games. They teach them how to do the coding. They teach them how to do the 3D modeling, the animation, the storylines, all that kind of stuff on how to create video games. So they're teaching it, but they also have a separate part of their business where they're working with people with disabilities. Now, this is where I really thought it was fascinating what they're doing, and I'm so proud of them for taking this on and adding this in, because what they're doing is they're working with people who have have disabilities. Now, these are people who are very smart individuals, but for one reason or another, wouldn't do well in an office setting. They, they would struggle being able to function in that setting and being able to do in an office setting, but they sure can learn how to code. They sure can learn how to write code and do other things that are the backbone of making video games and so forth. And so what they've done is they've created these training programs to train all these people into how to write the code for the games. They're teaching them directly from people who are working in the industry and they're showing them exactly how to do it. And now that these people have these skills and know how to do coding and things like that, they can be fully involved in working at a company, writing code and doing all these things, and they can do it all remotely. So any of the other issues that were holding them back before have now been removed because the opportunity is now being presented to them in a different way. And it's all about offering these opportunities so that more people can have a chance to participate and more people can have a chance to engage in these activities where otherwise there are other hindrances that may have held them back. And so I think that's just the, 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 a good example of the types of things that we can do to you know, allow people who may have otherwise had a difficult time making it work to give them the opportunity that, hey, you know what? I, I know that you can code really well. So, hey, just keep writing the code and keep doing that. And you can work on it from home and do it that way. And that's great. And that's just, we're opened up a great opportunity for these companies who can get extra workers to help them build their games and do all their stuff out because they need extra people writing the code and doing all these things. And it opens up a whole new set of opportunities for people who otherwise would not have had that chance. Yeah, absolutely. I think diversity of perspective and, and uh, accomplishing uh, tasks is always important, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and David, tell me, I'm curious to get you to finish this sentence. How do you think a, a longevity in business can be achieved for entrepreneurs? You know, the biggest word that I've always, I always tell people is persistence. I, I, I'm a firm believer that you know, the people who are the most successful are not necessarily the people who are the smartest. They're not necessarily the people who have the most talent. They're not the people who necessarily have the most connections and the most gifts. 
they're the people that didn't give up. They're the people that just kept working because I've met a lot of these super successful people. I've met a lot of these people who are just making millions and millions of dollars in their businesses, who have grown their businesses from nothing to very, very significant in size. I've run with a lot of them and met so many of them. And what you notice is, you know what, they're smart, but they're not smarter than everyone else. They're talented, but they're not talent, more talented than everyone else. What did they do? They just didn't give up. They never, they never quit. And they just kept working at it, working at it and working at it. And one of the, my mentors that I've worked with all the time, he just always had this habit of saying, every time you come up with a, to a hurdle and something wrong, just always keep in mind that it's just the next problem to solve. It's not necessarily going to stop you. It's just the next problem that you need to solve. So solve that problem and keep moving forward and keep moving forward. And that persistence and that dogged commitment to achieving what it is that you're doing is so incredibly important to have success. It's just so incredibly important for people to be able to get there. And if anything, that's what I tell people is that you don't have to worry about if someone's smarter than you or more talented than you, you just have to be committed and keep taking action because the vast majority of people quit at some point in the game. And some of them quit when they've almost realized success. The ones who truly succeed are the ones who just won't give up and just keep going. Yeah, absolutely. And, and to that point, uh, David, I, I'm curious to ask you about uh, first time entrepreneurs and sort of how can they minimize mistakes as they first uh, start out in their new business? Yeah, one of the things that I know um, is one of the biggest challenges that I see new entrepreneurs make, new people, people who are really just trying to do it for the first time and, and get things put together is a struggle with learning how to communicate the value of what you do. Um, that's one of the biggest things that I see is that people just don't, they don't know how to communicate the value. They don't know how to communicate what it is that they're doing in such a way so that other people would see it and say, wow, I get that. That's so valuable. I want to buy that. I want to get that because I get it. I get what you're doing. And I see person after person that comes to me and they may have a really great product. They may have a great service that does really some um, remarkable things for their customers, but they struggle with how to communicate it in such a way so that other people who are not familiar with it would go and understand how valuable it is. So the marketing of their message, the marketing of what's so valuable in what they do is, is oftentimes poorly communicated and so they put all their stuff out there and they're not communicating it all that well and then people will sit there and go well I don't understand why people aren't buying well it's your communication you're not communicating the value of your offer at a high enough level at, at a at an enticing enough level that people are going to want to buy it and, and a lot of times what they do instead is they they make it a little too much about themselves instead of about their customer and that really then makes the person on the other side say, well, this is kind of about you and your journey. It's not really about me and the problem that I'm trying to solve and the things that I'm trying to achieve. And so if you can really learn how to market it, if you can learn how to communicate the value of your offer and make it all about the customer on the other side and show how you can help change their life and make a difference for them, that's when you can really start to turn your business around and start getting some sales and making things go forward. And David, I'm also uh, picking up on, on the notion of marketing your message. I'm also curious to ask you, how do you think uh, job seekers can make themselves uh, appealable to uh, uh, entrepreneurs on a, a broader scale? I'm curious. Yeah, job seekers. Well, here's something that job seekers can learn from entrepreneurs is that what you have to realize is that when you go out and apply for jobs that, you know, for, with entrepreneurs or with other companies or whatever, you have to understand that even though you may not realize it, you do have a personal brand. That when somebody looks at you and they look at your experiences, when they look at your skills, when they look at the things that you've accomplished with your life, whether you understand it or not, is you are creating a brand for yourself. There's an image that you are creating and the person on the other side is gonna look at that image and say, is this a fit or not a fit? 
So what you really need to learn to do if you're a job seeker is you really need to learn how to, how am I going to intentionally create a brand for myself? How am I intentionally going to position myself in such a way that I can say, look, this is who I am. This is what I'm about. And this is what I stand for. And this is what I represent. And then find businesses or entrepreneurs that are going to be a match for that. So when you go talk to them and when you go, you know, communicate about to them about possibly working for them, they're going to see you and who you are and what you're about. And then the, you, when you, and the way you communicate yourself in that process, you're going to do some research on them. So there, you know, what's important to them. And then as you're presenting yourself, you're going to do it in such a way that you're trying to match up to who they are and what they're about. Now, obviously, be truthful about it. Don't, you know, misstate things, but use the things that are in you to try and match the values and the mission of the person you're, you're trying to get a job from. Yeah, absolutely. And, and David, I'm curious to ask you, you've, you've obviously been at, at this for a while, so I'm I'm uh, wondering for you, what's the biggest lesson you've learned in business and entrepreneurship? Yeah, I would just really say integrity matters. Um, when you're out here and you're working with people and you're doing different things, you know, you come across people of all different kinds. And by that, I mean people who, when they tell you, I'm going to do this, they do it. People who you can count on, people you can trust, people who, you know, if I give you something that needs to be done I, and we need it done by Friday, hey, I know that you're going to do it. I know you're going to get it taken care of. It's going to happen. And I know that it's going to be done well with, with excellence and with, you know, integrity and, and everything's, I can trust you and do that. I've ran across a lot of people over the years where you just can't really trust them and you know that they're really only in the game for themselves. And if doing something with you is beneficial to them, they'll do it. If it's not, then maybe they'll do it. it but you really can't count on them. So the people who don't fill that integrity, you know, it, who don't fill up, live their lives and run their businesses with integrity quickly fall off. And people quickly learn that I can't trust this guy. This guy over here, he's, you know, he's not honest. He's not doing those, the things in a way that I can trust him. So as a result, I'm not going to do business with him anymore. I'm not going to continue to partner with him or I'm not going to work with him because, it, you know, it, it's just not a person I want to be associated with. And, and I know someone very personally that, you know, had a very successful business, had a major integrity gap. And now that business is being decimated as we speak because, you know, it, it, people don't no longer want to work with him. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Your, your word still has value, doesn't it? A hundred percent. And David, I'm, I'm curious uh, behind you. I've been looking at uh, the background behind you and I can see a whole lot of different interests there, some music, some sports. So outside of the office, I know you're a dad as well. So tell me, uh, what, what are your passions away from work, Bonnie? Well, I like a lot of sports, as you can probably tell from the wall. <laughs> That's, uh, I see that. you see, <laughs> it's a little hard not to. Uh, I, I love sports. I love collecting memorabilia. So a lot of the pictures you see behind me are autographed pictures of different athletes and so forth that I've I've gotten, um, I know you, you know, you mentioned Pittsburgh before we got on the Steelers. That's a picture of the steel curtain from the 1970s. Then that was all autographed by the defensive line of the Steelers of the 70s. And, you know, that's like Magic Johnson, Ernie Banks, Earl Campbell, a lot of guys there. Um, the, the, the record behind me is actually a award that I got from ClickFunnels. Um, ClickFunnels hands out awards to people who generate over a million dollars through a single sales funnel. So that's actually what that award is for. I, I earned, we, we did it several times, actually. We sent several million dollars through one single sales funnel. And as a result of doing that, they, they gave me an award for doing that. So, but yeah, outside of that, I have, you know, three kids and we do a lot of stuff as a family, but I, I love sports. I love collecting memorabilia and sports cards and things like that. Very cool. And where, where do your uh, sports loyalties lie these days, Bonnie? Well, you know, I'm originally from Iowa. So I'm a, in, I, in college level, I usually root for the Iowa Hawkeyes because that's where I was born and raised. 
uh, at professional sports, I tend to root for uh, the Steelers, who this year are letting me down a little bit, but uh, I do root for the Steelers. I, I'm holding faith that they will turn things around here eventually. It's just not going to be this year, but uh, I root for them. Um, and then in baseball, I'm kind of a Cincinnati Reds fan. Um, so I, I, I tend to, I've rooted for them since I was a, a young kid as well. Um, NBA, I more just watch it for, for fun. I don't really have a real strong favorite team there anymore. Very cool. Well, I have to tell you, everyone around my house is a Michigan Wolver Wolverines fan. So this, oh. this, this so weekend, we so this Saturday we get to compete. Competing <laughs> interest there, Bonnie. And uh, there we go. <laughs> I, I'm a diehard Detroit Lions fan. So watching uh, the a game they had against the Steelers this year was a little painful, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, David, my final question for you before I ask how people can uh, get in contact with you, buddy, is I'm wondering if uh, you had any thoughts on how you want your uh, personal or professional legacy to be defined. Yeah, what I really, you know, one if a while, a few years ago, we had to, we were asked to pick a word at an event that I was at, like pick a word that defines you. And I really thought about it. And the word that I picked was grow. Um, and the reason I felt that was I've, I feel like that for me personally and for all the people that I work with. The, the thing that I really want to be known for is a person who grew to the fullest potential that he could of what he had inside of him and who helped other people grow to their full potential. Because I think inside of us, when we're young, we have all these skills and abilities, but so much of it is potential skills and abilities. They're, they're skills and abilities that are there that are yet undeveloped, but they're there. And we have this capacity within us to do all these amazing things. We have the capacity inside of us to, to achieve great things, to be a great influence on people's lives, to, to love other people, to make a huge difference in the world and to do great things. But if we don't intentionally pursue that, and if we don't intentionally go after those things, a lot of those potential abilities lie dormant and they don't actually happen. So the legacy that I would want to be known for is someone who helped people realize their potential and realize and knew how to keep help them grow and to become the person fully who God created them to be. Yeah, you know, maximizing your fullest potential is sort of uh, my tagline is a motivational speaker, so I can relate to that in that way. But David, I want to uh, thank you for joining me today and sharing your journey in entrepreneurship, your time, energy, and efforts and work in the space are, are on my behalf are most appreciated. And I want to uh, thank you for being here today, Bonnie. It's most appreciated. I'm happy to do it. Thank you for having me.